speaking for the United States, the FDA has approved pembrolizumab for patients whose tumors express PDL1 at 50% or higher at monotherapy. And uh, that's the only drug that's approved in that space right now. Uh, we've seen the chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab data in non squamous tumors, which Giorgio mentioned with carboplatin and pemetrexid. That's also approved. And PDL1 expression seems to be coming around as perhaps the best determinant at this time to decide which patient gets what therapy. Uh, I'm going to ask Marina to comment on PDL1 testing and how you look at the results from PDL1 testing to make treatment decisions for your patients. So thank you for the question because I think that it is really an important question. And uh, the PDL1 is the biomarker for which we have more robust data, but uh, it does not cover all the story of uh, immunotherapy. So we know from the Keynote 024, which that is now fundamental to test all the patients uh, for the presence of PDL1, but the story is, is quite different in second uh, and further line. So now uh, the story is also complicated because uh, the four drugs appeared on the market, uh, developed uh, the drugs uh, with different companion diagnostics, uh, and uh, we saw also in the last uh, uh, years uh, some tentative to harmonize uh, all uh, these tests uh, with the immunohistochemistry. And there are several papers uh, suggesting that, uh, starting from the blueprint trial, that uh, at least three commercial uh, available assays uh, are more or less the same, but one uh, is uh, quite different, which is the Ventana SP142. But again, also this result is quite controversial because uh, in the German harmonization trial, uh, there were the, the, all the four trials uh, performed in the same way, also with different cutoff. And then we know also uh, that, uh, that we have the difficulty to perform the PDL1 testing on the cytological specimen because generally we manage with cytological specimen uh, during our diagnostic uh, workup. So there is a huge confusion and I would like also to mention the French harmonization trial in which uh, uh, the uh, laboratory derived test does not perform as well as the commercial test. So it's also important when you do PDL1 to do PDL1 with at least uh, three kinds uh, of antibodies commercially available. So the story is quite complicated because we know also that some patients with PDL1 negative still benefit uh, from immunotherapy and not only PDL1 uh, strongly positive be uh, patients can benefit from immunotherapy. So I think that we have to work a lot uh, on uh, the population uh, at least less uh, than 50%. So when we're making decisions for our patient, if you had a frontline non-small cell lung cancer, newly diagnosed metastatic disease patient, is it fair to say, uh, Benjamin, that for a PDL1 high patient, we should give monotherapy with PD1 inhibitor, in this case Pembro, or would you consider using chemo plus Pembro for that patient? What's your approach? Well, as Georgia said in first line, uh, Pembrolizumab in high PDL1 and LCLC patients is probably the standard of care because the, the study with pembrolizumab is, is really convincing. It's a phase three study. Chemo pembrolizumab uh, combo was tested in a phase two study. The objective, uh, the primary objective was uh, response rate. And it's a very small study. Uh, I really think we uh, cannot um, change our practice based on a randomized phase two study. I was quite surprised that FDA could approve the drug based on such limited data. And it has to be stated that patients are highly, highly selected. The uh, control arm of this phase two study completely overperformed with a PFS roughly of nine months. It's unseen, unseen. You expect a PFS of six months in this With population. chemotherapy alone. So I really think that this phase two study is a concept study. Uh, it means that you have to test the uh, triplet in phase three studies, but in any case, I like to use this kind of data to change my practice. So for a squamous cell lung cancer patient, 
it's clear now that the first line paradigm is if your tumor is overexpressing PDL1 at 50% or greater, you get monotherapy with Pembro. If it's not, then you give chemotherapy platinum based. For non squamous, again, the panel seems to agree that for a high expressor of PDL1, you give Pembro monotherapy. For patients who don't have high expression, at least in the US, you have the option of chemo plus Pembro. Uh, in the rest of the uh, parts of the world, chemotherapy continues to be the mainstay of treatment. 